Hey guys, and welcome to the Johnny Boz podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Johnny Bosworth. And joining me today is singer, songwriter, uh, Devin Glover. Devin, welcome to the show. Woo! Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Um, I kind of wanted to start by um, just kind of giving you the backstory of like how I found out about your about your stuff. Um, so I was, there I was, uh, early 2019, hanging out, driving around, and I was on like uh, Spotify and I listened to like, I think it was like a Discover Weekly type thing and uh, Wandering Child came on and I was like, holy crap, this is like great. I was, uh, I was really shocked because I don't know about you, but I always stick to the music I know, the, the stuff I'm used to. I'm always re-listening to the same, uh, the same songs and artists. And it's pretty rare that I'll like what Spotify serves up or, you know, what algorithms give me. I'm like, ah, eh, that's okay, but whatever. But with you guys, it totally stuck. Um, and so, yeah, I've just been, just been a fan ever since. I feel like Spotify, honestly, like as, you know, it's the amazing part of it is the discoverability, especially exactly that time when we released that song, we got so lucky because we were kind of fed into the algorithm. And that was at a time when there wasn't, a whole lot of playlists and right. so it was kind of a snowball effect if you got onto one then like we just released that album and we were like we had no idea what we were doing we were like i guess we'll put it on spotify and all the things and then we'll just email people and ask them to listen and i remember sitting in a cafe for like eight hours a day emailing people getting zero responses and then one day we woke up to an email that was like your song wandering child got on my favorite coffee house and that and we, we didn't really know the significance of it but that is what kind of gave us a career so yeah it's cool to think back to that and hear a story like yours where it's like wow that it's it actually reaches people when it gets on a playlist like that yeah totally that that's awesome um and yeah i don't know it's like being being a creator of any type of art um, I, I feel like it's so strange to see metrics like, you know, I'll upload a video and I'll see the views, but I'm like, I don't know, even 60 people is like weird. It's like, wait, 60 people like looked at that thing. Right. So, so what was, yeah. what was that feeling like when you started kind of realizing that more people were going to like hear your stuff? I don't know. I still have a problem with it. Not not a problem because I'm so grateful, but my, my issue with it is actually feeling that it's real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I see the number and I'm like, this just isn't registering. Like this is even if it, yeah, if it, what, no matter the number, I'm just kind of like, I can't actually picture like 60 or whatever people sitting, listening to it. And it's, it's not until we go to do the live show that we all of us kind of snap into it. We're like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. These numbers on the screen are actually people in the audience now. And that is the most rewarding part. Like the numbers are amazing um, to see grow, but it's just, yeah, it doesn't really hit until you can take the show and play it live. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. You have to kind of get like a like real time feedback and, and to be able to like, I guess it's more tangible that way. Um, yeah, yeah. So, the internet just feels fake. <laughs> yeah, it does feel fake. Everything's digital, and like even I don't know my bank account. It's just a digital number. Nothing. Makes I know. Sense. I'm just like that's just a number. Like it's yeah. not real. Like it could it could all disappear one day. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. So you know we won't get into the whole how like everything's fake and you know what is existence. No, no, no. That's but, that's too deep for this early on in the yeah, interview. Yeah. That's 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 for like the 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 end of it. But um. Okay, so I guess you know. Let's start at the at the beginning, um, if that's cool. I'm curious. Like, uh, did you always play music growing up? How did you kind of uh, find yourself interested with it? Yeah. So as long as I can remember, I think I was like four years old when I told my parents that I was going to be a singer. So mm -hmm. it was definitely my only plan from a really young age. Um, I mostly just loved singing, and my family is pretty musical. Like my dad is an amazing singer. He's still in a band today. Um, and he kind of, both of my parents really just encouraged being involved in music. So I would be in all the choirs at school and like the musicals and the plays. And that was just always something that I was really compelled to. I was okay at instruments growing up. I mostly was just obsessed with singing. Yeah. Um, and 
it took me getting a little bit older to actually like practice instruments and writing and stuff like that. And I think I still feel like I have a long way to go in, in those areas, but um, singing has always just felt so natural to me and just like, it really connects me to myself. So I can't really imagine doing anything else, honestly. That's that's awesome. Uh, that's, that's so great to hear um, that it's, you know, it's been a passion from early on and it, it makes sense. I, I definitely relate like, um, you know, I made videos in high school and like film and video is kind of, oh, cool. my, kind of my thing. You know, I, I was into, I was like recording stuff with like a flip camera when I was 11, you know, like all that stuff. And, and, um, it, when it came time to go to college, the whole thing from my parents was like, you can do whatever you want. You just have to go to college. And, I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, right. It was like, you got to go to university or whatever. And um, filmmaking or, or just video in general was like the only thing I knew to do. I was like, I don't know what else to even major in, you know? So yeah. that's awesome that you had a similar experience where like it, it was just it was just what you were going to do, you know? Well, it's cool because like for you when you're a kid, you're just playing with video and stuff because it's fun and you don't really realize like, oh, I'm actually getting so much, so many amazing skills and experience from this that you could then go to school and like, you know, hold up in a film program. And, and it's just, that's what's so magical about being a kid is if you just follow like a passion and not even thinking of what the outcome could be, then usually that's the best way for it to translate into a career. And I feel lucky that like, it sounds like both of us that was kind of it, it. The passion came first, and then we were like, "Oh, I guess we should try and do this." It wasn't necessarily like, "I have to do this, or I'm going to die." Right. Although I guess it, it kind of was. Kind of but was, yeah. <laughs> it didn't feel that way. Yeah. No. No. It's amazing. Like, um, I remember my dad because I don't know. Like, creative stuff is so weird, and it can be hard to like put words to it, or you know, sometimes it doesn't make logical sense. And so I would just go and make things. And my dad would be like, you're really talented. Like you have skills in this. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, it's just, it's so weird to, like you're saying, you know, it, it, when you spend time on something, you're going to improve at it and get better. Uh, and it turned out that like all those skills I had developed, like almost unknowingly, like really came in handy, you know, when it came time to actually totally. be a job or, or be something that can, that can support you, you know? Yeah. And sometimes it takes somebody telling you like, oh, you're actually good at this to realize because you as a kid, you're like, oh, I'm just doing this for fun. And it feels like you have so much to learn and so far to go. Yeah. And then when somebody kind of checks you and they're like, actually, this is really unique and creative. It's a cool feeling and kind of probably empowered you to be like, oh, maybe I'll just keep going with this. Absolutely. And sometimes it takes many times for someone to say, oh, yeah, have skill for it. <laughs> for skill. It I'm like, give me validation. <laughs> Can I quit? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um, so so you were uh, in interested in music as a kid. And then sort of as you grew up, uh, you kind of got more involved with uh, creating and in production. Um, do you remember what like your first kind of uh, first gig was even for sure? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I guess my first paid thing was probably I w when I so I went to college, um, which is where I met my bandmate Cal, and I I went for psychology, just completely random degree. My parents were like, "We support you, but how are you going to become a singer? How are you going to become a sustainable musician?" And my answer to them was like, "Oh, I'm just going to get discovered, obviously." And yep. I had no <laughs> real plan, so they their rule was okay, go to college. You can figure this out in the background, but you can't just, that can't be your plan. So I went and uh, since I wasn't doing music as a degree, I was looking for any opportunity to just like play and meet people that were musical. Um, and I think my first paid gig was like, I don't know. I, I would play in random buildings at university where like nobody wanted to listen, like a <laughs> random cafe and like the engineering building. And they'd be like, we can give you like a muffin and, 50 bucks because we have to technically pay you and i was like yeah and i would just sing like rihanna covers and play really bad <laughs> at guitar. and uh all my friends were very supportive but then one of them knew cal and he was kind of doing a similar thing and then we got connected and then that's when i feel like it took having somebody else who was equally motivated to be like okay like now i have a, an actual plan because before it just felt like i was just like 
flailing and improvising all the time. Yeah, no, totally. I I think uh, creative partners are so important and like that can be the difference between uh, getting something finished or not, you know? Um, 100%. Because, yeah. Yeah, because like I, I know with the creative process it's it's really difficult to bring things to the finish line um because that's my biggest struggle <laughs> yep <laughs> me too like um I, I think of it kind of like a graph it's like okay um i have a cool idea it sounds interesting okay all right it sounds good all right now it's terrible now it's the worst thing that has ever been produced and then it finally at the end slides up to like okay this is this is acceptable yeah, I can relate for sure. <laughs> for me, it's like, it's the the way, the place I get in my own way is if I really like something that I've started to write. And it's, I almost think it's like so good that I might never be able to make anything that good again. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to finish it because I'm like, what if the second verse ruins what I already have that I already like? So then I just end up having verse chorus of like a million unfinished ideas of <laughs> And I'm like, well, I wrote like 10 songs, but it doesn't count if they're not finished. So yeah, yeah. it's a weird like mind game you have to play with yourself to be like, I don't care about it that much. So I'm just going to like write the second verse and then finish it and then go back and edit it. But I can definitely relate to that. Yeah, um, totally. I I remember my my buddy Jason was like, I was having this kind of like creative block. I hadn't made anything in a minute. And I was like, like, do you have any advice? And he was like, uh, making things like, don't be precious about it. Just create it, and then afterwards, kind of take a look and and see what it is. Um, do you do you have any ways that that you've kind of gotten through creative blocks uh, in the past? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely struggled with them a lot. I think when i do experience them it's kind of one of two things it's because i think that's really good advice that your friend said it's either i'm holding myself to an impossible standard and i'm just tr trying to be excellent at everything i do which is like a little bit egotistical to expect yourself to be like the you know what i mean yeah. so i kind of check my ego a little bit and it's like that whole it's cheesy but it's like dare to suck like be willing to make something bad mm -hmm. to get it out of your system so that you can just move on to the good thing. Um, but for me also free writing, like journaling really, really helps me just kind of like get in the process of being in touch with my internal dialogue kind of. And like, if you're writing a million things every day, then it feels less precious when you go to write a song because you kind of already know what you want to say. You might've worked it out um, just through doing the journaling. So it, yeah, that kind of, like artist way approach has really helped me a lot. Yeah, yeah, th no, that's that's awesome. Uh, I love journaling for so many reasons. I, also, it's just yeah. it feels good. Like uh, aside from that. creativity, it's just it's good to get those thoughts out. Um, is that uh, sort of where your songs come from a lot of the time? Is it from journals and and things you've written down? It's I don't consciously go to the journals and try and pull from them, but I think a lot of the time the journals make me realize what I want to say. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like the journaling comes first and then I'm able to like reword the thought into a lyric, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, no, totally, totally. Um, and kind of going off of that, um, writing a song is difficult <laughs> um i've i've like written some silly songs i've tried to write serious ones before it's it's been a mixed bag but um have you found that there's uh kind of something that comes first for you um whether it's like music lyrics melody ideas um yeah i it's so it's kind of different every time i it and it all happens at once like i'll usually in my notes app in my phone just write a few lines or ideas if I, like if i'm walking around or sitting on the subway and feel inspired but don't want to write a whole thing i'll just have a little nugget i'll keep them in the notes and then i'll either if i'm working with other people bring those into a session and kind of like whatever they're playing i'll try and take that concept and grow it um or if I'm by myself, I try and switch it up. Like if I'm pretty average at the guitar, so I tend to go to the same chord structures and 
So I've written a lot of the same song over and over. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if I feel that I'm doing that, it's helpful to collaborate or it's helpful to make a beat and try and freestyle over that. And then also like freestyling when I don't know what I want to say often kind of pulls something out of my subconscious and I'll freestyle until something's kind of sounding like a word. And then I'll be like, Oh, what does that mean? And it's like a weird self discovery thing where I don't know what I'm trying to say. And then sometimes at the end it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, using, using all of, all of your tools to your disposal. That that's, that's great. Um, so do you have, um, kind of a part of of making music that is your favorite like is it uh lyrics um production when everything's finally finished like what's your kind of favorite part of the process would you say probably melody writing comes the most natural to me um I definitely get frustrated when it comes to playing like I feel like I'm the kind of person who needs to practice a lot Mm -hmm. and if I don't then I lose it And so in between tours, I'm like, oh, God, I'm so intimidated to go back. Um, I love writing, but I've recently been really into production. I I find in times when it's when I don't really know what I want to say yet or I don't know what my next project wants to sound like. I kind of just give myself the freedom to just make silly little beats. And then some of them are cool, like maybe 10 10 percent of them are cool. Um, But I like hopping around just because it keeps it fresh and it also um, takes less pressure, takes the pressure off each individual element of it. Totally. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. Um, yeah, just variety, I I feel like can just help so much and, and just putting stuff like throwing stuff at the wall, you know, you gotta, you gotta know how to see what sticks and, and, and stuff like that. Um, what about you for videos? Are you always coming up with kind of ideas of what you want to make or, that is the hardest part for me. So uh, ideas are really tough. Um, I love editing. That is yeah. kind of when I turn things into, because it's all jokes, you know, so I'm I'm messing with timing and making sure it, yeah. it comes out funny. Um, I really do like uh, recording them as well. Um, but yeah, honestly, lately, I'll just sit in front of the camera and just start talking and like hope something funny happens. That's great. Um, yeah. Y- yeah, because it's like you got it. You got to get those wheels spinning, you know. Um, and it's always when you like are about to give up, I feel that and you kind of like you're just like, who cares? Like, fuck it at this point. And then that's when something funny ha- that you yeah. say something funny. But that's when a good idea comes and you're like, oh, like 45 minutes later. But like, finally, because you've kind of exhausted your the part of your brain that's judging you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Right. Because you're, you're just, you're just, there's no energy left to judge. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah, I, I recently, uh, I recorded a video and I, I went in not knowing what I was going to do. And I always start every YouTube video with like, Hey guys, Johnny here. Like that's my little YouTuber intro. And, um, I said, Jonah, because I was like, hey, what if I just, for this video, thought my name was Jonah? And that just became <laughs> like a minute of me not knowing my name, which is like so stupid. But I was like, hey, that worked, you know? And it just came out of, it just came out of uh, just just showing up for it, you know? Showing up and not caring, not taking yourself too seriously. That, that was, that's literally the best tip of creativity. It's the hardest thing, but it's just like, just don't take it so seriously. It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> yeah, Totally. And yeah, I, I feel like we can get in our own way a lot, you know? Yeah. Um, so kind of back to, back to our, uh, I guess the timeline, right? So, so you meet Cal and, and you guys start making stuff together. Um, you guys started not, like you started a, a musical project before Wild Rivers, right? We did. It was called Devin and Khaled. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was a duo. Um, we mostly did we played every week on campus at this bar. We had like a three hour residency on a Sunday night, which in hindsight, we're so grateful for because that was kind of like our 10,000 hours. Um, But we'd honestly just do like hours and hours of covers. And then we did release an original EP at the very end of college. Um, And one of the songs won a radio contest in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, oh my gosh, like maybe we could actually do this if we're on the radio. And then that just kind of gave us the confidence to become a real band. And then we met Andrew through our first drummer, Ben, 
and we made our first album and we were like let's see and yeah. we just kind of we've been faking it ever since <laughs> i love that that that's amazing um yeah it, it's like you know the, those uh kind of first shows you were talking about i was hearing it and thinking oh that must have been really great to like it may not have been uh the greatest thing or the most uh most fulfilling uh creatively necessarily but yeah that that's kind of like you said, your thousand hours, you know, you guys are getting your, your, your reps in, right? Totally. I mean, yeah, we played to no, nobody or like three of our closest friends, like so many times we tell this story on stage, but we also took a gig at a retirement home once and we, all the old people absolutely hated it. They were like, play the classics. We don't like your original song. <laughs> and those are the things that build character. And yeah. you know, those are the things you need to succeed in life. Totally, totally. Whether whether the, the <laughs> takeaway is don't play retirement homes or, <laughs> or you know, just, just developing that thicker skin. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's great. And, and a very funny <laughs> little story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, well, the reason we tell it on state, we tell it before Heart Attack because we're like, and then we played a song called Heart Attack and they hated us even more <laughs> because it was triggered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, that. I guess that might, yeah, have a have a different uh, a different reaction. Maybe inappropriate. Right, right, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so j I'm gonna jump around uh, for a minute because I was thinking about for it. Th thinking about lyrics again, um, and kind of writing. Um, I'm curious when you are going to create a song, uh, or whether you're saying, okay, it's time to start my album. Um, are you thinking, okay, these are kind of the topics that I want to discuss. Uh, these are the things I want to express in a song, or do they kind of reveal themselves to you as you're, uh, kind of creating? Love to be a person that goes in with a concept. I think that's a goal of mine at some point in my career, but it's always been the opposite. It's always been a theme revealing itself or just a moment in time where I'm writing about the same thing naturally. And then I look at it, I'm like, well, I guess this is a breakup album. Yeah. Um, but for me, what's most helpful thinking things, thinking of things as an album is just so they kind of sonically sound the same even if they're not necessarily about the exact same thing um trying to kind of build like a musical world um is something i try and focus on when i make an album but yeah lyrically it's kind of whatever i'm feeling and then i look back and i'm like oh i guess that's what it was about but yeah would love to try the other way that feels like a big challenge yeah absolutely yeah um that does sound really hard. I, I think I think if I were a musician, I would probably be a similar way of just kind of realizing things as they as they are developed. Um, and you know, I, I feel like there's a couple different things when it comes to being an artist and having your work, you know, be released uh, to the public. Um, there's that that creative side that is uh, full of passion and ideas and like. Um, and enthusiasm and then there's also like business and and strategy and like algorithms and social media and so i kind of just generally wanted to ask you about like how how would you say you you uh what what's that relationship right for you between <clears throat> strategizing and and uh you know content strategy rollout all that stuff versus like um just that that core passion of it Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish it could just be the passion, but I feel lucky that at the beginning of the band, it was just the four of us. We had no team. We had an amazing friend who was a marketing major and he was helping us with marketing and brainstorming. And we kind of just pulled from our community, but also put in the work to, we divided and conquered. We, um, we were like, you're gonna do PR outreach and you're gonna book the shows and you're gonna order the merch. And we just like split up the roles and then we treated it like a full-time job. We all read like music for dummies or whatever, like the songwriting books. And we were pretty nerdy about it. And I think it was partially because we had just graduated and all of our friends were entering the workforce and making a bunch of money. And like they had these big 
nine to five jobs and we were kind of like, what are we doing? So we treated it like a job. Um, and I'm so grateful that uh, for that period because it was really stressful, I remember. And I remember feeling like everything we did was leading to nothing, but now being aware of that side of things just feels like such an important skill that I'm glad we all have, even though the music industry changes so much. And I feel like I'm, I got a lot to catch up on um, for my project, especially because I, I am kind of like starting from the beginning. Mm. Um, I think it's really important to just be tapped into both and know what deals you're signing and know why things are important and, you know, using the strategy to your advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you could almost say that uh, that the music industry is a, a moving target. Um, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'll be doing my best to work in uh, song titles and lyrics throughout the interview. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay, so um, that that is really interesting, and I really liked what you said about. Uh, that last bit you mentioned, knowing which contracts to sign. Um, I feel like that has to be difficult. Like, um, could you talk a little bit about what it's like to to know what to say yes to? And and because obviously, you know, I, I mean, I went through that that period after college where all your friends are, you know, all my friends were engineers, and they were immediately like, boom, full time job, big salary, whatever. And I'm just sitting here yeah. like freaking out and um and we're waiting you know for opportunities to come along um has mm -hmm. that been has that been difficult for you to kind of know know which things are something you should pay attention to and which you should kind of pass on we kind of we've talked about this a lot with our manager because when we signed to her we were at a point where we were saying yes to anything mm -hmm. just trying to get as much experience as we can try and meet as many people as we can, try and learn from as many people as we can. Like we would be the band at all the like music conferences sitting in the panels and stuff, which yeah. is so lame. None of the cool musicians ever did that. Um, we would never see anybody there. And then we'd go to like the after party and everyone would be like, have been there all day. And we we're like, oh, we're doing this all wrong. Like, but um, I think you have to say yes to a certain point to be able to then have the control and the knowledge to start saying no, like the leverage to say no. I think there's so much power in saying no and being selective with what you're doing. And that's kind of our ethos now is like, if, a, if an opportunity presents itself, we really try and think about why are we taking this? What is the goal of it? Or is it something that's personally important or is it leading to a certain Thing that we want to achieve or is it just something we care about um but i think you can really burn out from saying yes to everything and we i think you have to for a couple of years when you're just kind of getting your bearings but then saying no is so liberating and it just allows you to focus on the things that actually feel important to you even if it's not like the best thing or the right thing I think focusing on what feels important will get you to where you want to go. Because if you're doing things against your will or doing things that if you feel like you're just doing them because you have to, that's also going to burn you out eventually. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that that makes total sense. And and um, I'm glad you guys had each other, you know, to kind of go through it together. Um, it must be That nice was a to, huge thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really special. Yeah. It's... it's uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's nothing like bouncing off ideas off of one another and and trusting each other to kind of you know check each other where where you're at and and where you should go forwards. Um, do you do you find that uh, that Cal is also like a good uh, is he is he kind of like your your sounding board or are you kind of sounding boards for each other when it comes to making music? Um, because yeah, yeah. yeah. So now it's Cal, Andrew, and I, and I feel like we all balance each other out really, really well. Yeah. Um, like, we, I don't know. I feel like Andrew's like the level-headed one who's very, like, calm all the time. And Cal and I are a bit more, like, erratic, like, we should do this. Like, I definitely get in my head and have a more, like, chaotic approach to decision-making. Um, and we all just have such different skills that it's cool when we don't, 
know the answer to something or know how to take the song to the finish line, we can just be like, okay, Andy, you make the beat for this. Like, I don't know. It's, it's nice. We all have different skills and different like inspiration. So um, it is a good way for us to get unstuck when we're, when we're having certain ideas and just like nice to be able to have those discussions because there is no right answer for a lot of the decision-making musically and professionally. So it's just nice to be able to like talk things through and kind of see where we're all coming from. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, speaking about inspiration, um, this is one of my favorite questions is, uh, what kind of music or artists, uh, inspire you? So growing up, um, I think it was a, a combination of the music my parents showed me and then pop music. So the music my parents showed me was soul and singer songwriter. So like Joni Mitchell, James Taylor, Jackson five, Aretha Franklin, Marvin Gaye. And it was, that was like playing throughout our house all the time. I think I literally learned how to sing because my parents gave me the best of the Jackson five CD when I was like six years old and I took it and I put it in my CD player and I just memorized all of the runs and how to sing every song. Um, but then the songwriting inspiration came from the more like classic singer songwriters of the sixties, seventies. And then also I loved pop so much like mm -hmm. Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, all of that. And now I'm in a folk band, yeah. <laughs> but also doing like a pop project. So I don't know. My inspirations are, they come from all different kind of places, but I, I like to think I honor them each in different ways. Yeah. Um, and now, now I'm really inspired by artists who are really versatile, but kind of like have the common thread of just their artistry throughout the different types of songs they make. I think good Examples of that are Ryan Beatty, um, who just put out like a beautiful acoustic singer songwriter folk album, but also sings all the hooks for Brockhampton and also writes for big pop artists and just has the versatility. But you hear a melody and you know it's him mm. and you hear a lyric and you know that it's him. Mm. Um, Claro, I think, is really great at that, too. Billie Eilish is great at that. Um, just like artists who can maintain their integrity while trying, while having the freedom to kind of roam and just try stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Um, so do you find that, uh, that you're also getting, uh, inspiration from like other forms of, of media or art, like outside of just musicians? It's definitely mostly music for me. I'm, yeah. I'm very like motivated by hearing a good song of being like, I want to make something that good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely movies are a big one. Um, I've been reading a lot more than I ever have. And nice. I feel like just the act of, I know it sounds lame because I want, I wish I was more of a reader than I am, but like, I feel like it's such a good exercise for your imagination to just read. And then you're picturing what you're reading. And for a long time, I just didn't read. I don't know why, but that's been really helpful and just being able to visualize things a lot more yeah um and just personal stories talking to friends talking to other writers um just from wherever i can take it really yeah absolutely absolutely i um i'm in a similar i mean i have like five books that i've read maybe a chapter of all of them i i always am wanting to read more and i never do but when i do and it's a good book you're like wait a minute this was here the whole time and i wasn't like i get so excited um i'm the same way i like uh, well, look what i just got this is my dedication this is my commitment to reading more i i invested in a kobo there you go it's i'm gonna bring it on tour and i'm not gonna go on tiktok i'm just gonna read <laughs> books there you go you heard it here first everybody make sure you keep her accountable uh, no i love that, that that's, that's awesome um sometimes you need you need that that little uh bit of bit of motivation to like, exactly kind of get it i need to spend money to make sure that i'm gonna read <laughs> exactly exactly that's what it's all about is i have found if the more money i spend the better i am the more successful i am you know I feel like it's just about, okay, and you hope that you make it back, but you never know. <laughs> right, right. 
Right. We will. We will, though. We we'll will. make it back. It's going to be great. Everything's we'll going to work out. <laughs> um, but yeah. It's all, it's so the all. lesson is buy whatever you want and it'll come back to you. Exactly. Because you'll be happy. That's the hack to capitalism, everyone. We figured it out right here. Um, so, so, you know, take our advice. Um, <laughs> speaking of advice, um, I think that um, there's really, th there's nothing like that can, that can prep you for a lot of the things you go through in life in general um, until you just do it. Uh, a lot of times I, I've found for me that, you know, I have to go through an experience to come out the other side of it uh, and, and draw things from what I went through. Um, all that to say, kind of like, do you have a something or a few things that you might say to, uh, say, Dev from, you know, from high school? or college like what what would you kind of say to your your younger self i mean i i feel like i need to say this to myself now still i think i have a really bad tendency of just trying to predict how things are gonna go um i think it's like a my controlling nature just to be like okay this is how this is how what it's gonna look like and this is gonna be the outcome and like mentally prepare myself for that but you never know the outcome and I think that's prevented me a lot, honestly, from being able to enjoy some of the experience that we are having because I'm trying to guess how I'm going to feel at the end of it. Um, and so it's been a big exercise over the past few years of just trying to enjoy it and not predict the outcome, whether it's good or it's bad, because there's been times where we think something's going to happen and we get really excited and it doesn't happen. And then you have the worst day of your life and then something amazing happens. And so my advice, I mean, I guess it just says be present, but like yeah. it's, it's hard work to be present. So putting in the work, I think going back to the journaling, that really helps me like ground myself in the moment and doing things like going for walks with no headphones, like little things like that, that I've been trying to incorporate just to be like, I'm here today and I don't, this, all of this could go away. And so I, I sat around for so long being like, well, how's this going to go? What's it going to look like? And, um, so yeah, I guess just, I would tell my younger self to chill. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. That's advice I always need also. Um, yeah. Um, just chill. I'm constantly freaking out, honestly, but, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll get, uh, caught up with numbers and I'll get bummed out if something doesn't perform as well as I thought it would or wanted it to. Um, but then I kind of learned a lot through therapy, but also just thinking to myself, like, um, how well something does is completely out of my control. And so if I hinge my feelings off of something I can't control, I'm often going to be disappointed, you know? Um, would you say that that's kind of rung true for you as well? Oh, man, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like there there's like a rule that the song you think is going to do the best is never the one that does the best. It's always a random song. Like, <laughs> it's happened to us so many times where we'll we'll go into a release and we're like, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one we all feel so good about. And then that does nothing. And then this song that we didn't really care about does so well. And I think that, I don't know, maybe this is a little woo woo, but like, it's because you're holding on too tight. Like, I feel like when I like something so much and I hold on too tight, I'm like, this is going to be perfect. Like something in the universe is just like, we're going to teach you a lesson. But if... I'm not thinking about it and I'm not putting any pressure on it. Um, things often like happen on their own. And so it's kind of just a weird, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird thing where you just have to, it's true. You can't, you can't hinge your happiness on something that isn't predictable. Um, and so I now, when I release a song, I used to sit with the Spotify for artists app open and, it's really messed up because every time you get a stream on the first day, it just buzzes your phone. Oh. So I would sit there and it would like buzz in my hand, like a dopamine rush. And I'd just be like, Ugh. <laughs> and now, and, then, and now I'm just like, I can check once in the morning and I can check at the end of the day. And for the rest of the time, I'm just doing something else because otherwise I'm just miserable all day because it's never, 
doing the thing that you think it's going to do. You know what yeah. I mean? To- totally. But I am satisfied unless it like hit number one on radio and then I'd still be like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's, it's a weird one. No, totally. I, I, I totally, I totally feel that. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like you, you hope it's going to do the best it could. And at the same time, that's still like, doesn't quite meet what you're wanting, which is so weird, but yeah. Um, yeah. So you, uh, also have and you briefly mentioned it i think uh you also have a solo uh some solo stuff you've got a solo career um i couldn't think of uh the word of <laughs> you you have a solo project maybe that's a better project yes, project yes, yes, yes. so uh i i also am a big fan of of your solo project um i think Thank that you. i mean both both in wild rivers and and your solo stuff um your lyrics just really resonate with me. And I feel like you have a really, uh, you have a really good grasp on, um, capturing emotion and like filling it. You, you, you make everything so dense, you know, with exactly, I feel like what you're wanting to say. And I feel like that is what really like kind of glued me to, to your guys work, you know? Um, so much that's such a compliment I feel like i i've been self-conscious about my songwriting so that that means a lot to hear no a- absolutely um because i i don't know i i think a lot of music um I, i'm also a huge a huge pop fan and a lot of pop songs are um much more sparse in terms of uh how much they're saying uh per song and i actually this was what um this is what draw uh, like you and Holly Humberstone. That's what connected them. Uh, you guys in my head was like, oh, they both do like super, uh, super dense, very like uh, emotion filled lyrics. Um, so that's something that I, I found as a commonality. Um, was that in- intentional for you or is that just sort of like how it shook out once you wrote some songs? Um, I definitely struggle with trying to fit way too many ideas into one song. (laughs) I think I naturally, that's kind of how my brain works. Like I get very, like I'm a very anxious person. And so my brain looks like the chaos of just like a million thoughts at once that are kind of stemming from the same emotion and me just trying to like make sense of them all. Um, but there, I, I, kick myself because there's so many songs that I've released that I'm like, this is going to be so hard to sing live because <laughs> I'm not going to be able to take a breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I'm trying to say less in my life now, but um, thank you for the Holly comparison. I love her. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Holly. Um, definitely. I think uh, this is the greatest place as ever uh, to jump into a little game that I've prepared um, so this is called the Johnny Boz lyric game uh, trademark, and uh, basically I'm gonna give you uh, I'm gonna give you three different lyrics, um, and you'll have to tell me uh, which song they're from. So there's gonna be three rounds. Um, are you ready? You ready to okay. uh, to see if you know where they're from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I guess I should clarify. This is these are songs that you have created. <laughs> They're not just random songs. Um, <laughs> that's 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 for next time. Okay. Um, so let's start with this one. Find me a place that can make a couple tables turn. And I have hints as well if you need them. Find me a place that can make a couple tables turn. A week ago? Uh, it is not a week ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would be good at this. I'm definitely the person in the band who forgets the lyrics the least, but I still, I'm like, I know that lyric, but yeah. I don't remember. I am found me a place of, I like can't even think of the melody. Okay, hint, can I have a hint? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, you have two hint options. Um, a place that can make Paul Simon. That's Paul it. You Simon. got it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well done. All right. One for one. One for one. Here we go. Okay. Number two. You have me on your chain till I rip them all away when I cut you loose. I won't be back. It is. I won't be back. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's it. That's it. <laughs> two for two. Woo! Two for two. 
All right. All right. And <laughs> here is the final lyric for this Johnny Boz lyric game. Okay. Okay. And, um, and weekend trips to Portobello. I don't mean to get sentimental, but this feeling's getting harder to explain. We can just support. That's London, and I just put that out, so that one's fresh in my mind. That is London, Dev's latest release. Everybody, go stream Woo! it now wherever you get your music. Awesome, amazing. Stream it now, or else. Stream it now. We will come for you. <gasps> we're we're watching, and we'll know if you don't listen to it. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well done, Dev. I figured this game would be really difficult because it's, you know, it, these are removed from from melody, from the music behind it, but you got it three for three. You did great. Thank you so I much. I struggled with the first two, but that was fun. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for playing. Um and just in general, um thank you so much for for sitting down and and taking the time to talk. This was a, a really really great conversation. Yeah, thank you. No, this was super fun. I love your questions. And it's fun to talk about music again because both my myself and the band are about to release a lot of music this year. So it's fun to kind of reflect going into that period. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, just very excited uh, as, a, as a fan for all the music coming this year. So perfect timing. Um, so much. So much. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. OK, before we wrap up here, um, I want to do do the old the old hot ones thing. Um, so this camera, this camera, this camera. Uh, tell the people what you have going on in your life. Where can they find you and and all that sort of thing? Okay, um, I'm just going to announce it here now for the first time. Oh my I am putting out a mixtape on February 23rd. I won't tell you the name, but okay. it. I just uploaded it to the internet today. Um, so that's very exciting. And then uh, I'm also in a band called Wild Rivers. I can't tell you more about what we're doing, but we have a lot of music coming out this year. So Devin, Wild Rivers, go to Spotify, go to Instagram, follow us, hang with us, come to shows. And thank you yes. in advance. Heck yeah. And oh my <laughs> gosh, the exclusive, the Johnny Boz exclusive announcement. The Johnny Boz exclusive. <laughs> so excited for that. Awesome. Perfect. Well, uh, yeah, thank you so much for being on the podcast. And uh, yeah, it's great, great to chat. Nice to chat with you, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you.